how we're going to start this lesson today is by reviewing our homework. So let's just take a look here. I'm just going to go through this pretty quickly. Um, first thing is D a subset of A. Well, 2, 4, 6 are all in A, so the answer is yes, because all the elements of D are also in A. Is B a subset of A? No. Why not? Who can tell me why not? Which number or numbers shows me why not? What number in B is not in A? 10, right? 8. So those are not in A, so B is not a subset of A because there are elements in B that are not in A. All right? What is A intersection B? All the numbers that are in both A and B. So that would be what? 2, 4, 6, and 12. Okay? What is A union B? Well, everything in A, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Good. Everything in A or B. What is A complement? Well, our universal set is the numbers 1 through 12. So A complement are the numbers that are not in A in our universe. So that's 5, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? Okay. So that's those ones. Now, you have a set of 10 cards numbered 1 through 10. You choose a card at random. Event A is choosing a number less than 7. Okay, so the way that we should start this is by listing set A, okay, writing out set A, a number less than 7, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, does it include 7? No, it doesn't. Event B is choosing an odd number, so that's 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9, okay. Probability of A, well, it's the number of elements in A over the number of elements in our sample space. Well, the number in our sample space are 1 through 10, so that's definitely 10 numbers. The number of elements in A is 6. So it's 6 over 10, but you should simplify that to 3 over 5. Probability of selecting a number that's less than 7 or an odd number is, um, well, let's figure out what A union B is first. Well, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9. So there's 8 in there, so the probability will be 8 over 10, which simplifies to 4 over 5. A complement is all the numbers equal to or greater than 7. So A complement would be 7, 8, 9, and 10. And the probability would be 4 over 10 or 2 over 5. Does that make sense? You guys see what we're doing here? Okay, any questions? All right. So those are those. Okay, now we get into the word problems. Let's take a look at these. So I didn't have you do 16. Let's take a look at 15. You roll a six-sided number cube. What's the probability you do not roll a 2? Well, not rolling a 2 is the same thing as rolling either a 1, 3, 4, 5, or 6, which is 5 out of 6. Does that make sense? The probability of rolling a 2 is 1 out of 6. So the probability of not rolling a 2 is 1 minus 1 over 6, which is 5 over 6. I could have done it that way as well. Does that make sense? Okay. Number 17, you spin the spinner shown. The spinner is divided into 12 equal sectors. What's the probability of not spinning a 2? Well, it's the same thing. It's 1 minus 1 12th, which is just 11 12th. See? See how that works? That's why working with complements is way easier. Chris, why don't you go to the next one? Okay. Working with complements is way easier than just trying to figure out what the complement is. You see, just probability is 1 minus the probability of the original set. So 1 minus 112 in that case. Okay. Number 19. Cards numbered 1 through 12 are placed in a bag. 
A card is chosen at random. What's the probability of not choosing a number less than 5? Okay, not choosing a number less than 5 means not choosing 1, 2, 3, or 4. Well, the probability of choosing those numbers would be 4 out of 12, so not choosing that would be 1 minus 4 over 12, which would be 8 out of 12, or 4, 6, or 2 thirds. Okay? So not choosing is 1 minus the probability of choosing. So that's good. Um, Okay, let's take a look at number 21. Okay. You're going to roll two number cubes, a white number cube and a red number cube, and find the sum of the two numbers that come up. What's the probability that the sum will be 6? That's a tough one. What's the probability that the sum will be 6? White number cube and a red number cube. Find the sum of the two numbers that come up. Well, the best way that you could kind of do this is to create a table. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So these are all the ones. These are all the opportunities. You could say this is the white die and this is the red one. And then you add them. 1 and 1 is 2. 1 and 2 is 3. 1 and 3 is 4. 1 and 4 is 5. 1 and 5 is 6. 1 and 6 is 7. Okay. 2 and 1 is 3. And it just keeps going up so it's easy to fill it in. And this would be 4, 5, 6, 7. And then it just goes up from there. So I hope you guys are understanding that this is basically all the possible outcomes that you could get. You see? That's all the possible outcomes you could get for rolling two die. Uh, rolling a pair of dice, or number cubes they call them here. Um, what's the probability that the sum will be 6? So here's a 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's 5 out of 36, so the probability is 5 out of 36. What's the probability the sum will not be 6? Well, it's 1 minus that, or just 31 out of 36. There's not a much better way to do that. There's really not. So um, that's the reason why that was tough is because you didn't necessarily know, like, how can I figure that out? Well, the best way to do it is by creating a table like that. You figure out what all the possible sums are. That's your sample space. All of these numbers are my sample space. All these possible outcomes are my sample space. Right? And the probability is um, how many of the event occurs over the number of event, number of elements in my sample space. So 5 out of 36. Okay. Now. 23 and 25. God bless you. A standard deck of cards has 13 cards. 2 through 10, Jack, Queen, King, Ace. In each of four suits, hearts, clubs, diamonds, spades. The hearts and diamonds cards are red. Clubs and spades cards are black. Answer each question. If you choose a card from a standard deck of cards at random, what's the probability that you do not choose an ace? Okay, well, how many aces are there? Four, right? So the probability of choosing an ace would be 4 out of 52. So the probability of not choosing an ace is 1 minus 4 out of 52, which would be 48 over 52, which is 24 over 26, which then simplifies to 6. Thank you, sir. Yes? Yeah, well, it makes sense. Another way to think about it is there's one, there's one ace out of 13 cards in each suit. So not choosing an ace is 12 out of 13, right? Good. You choose a card from a standard deck of cards at random. Event A is choosing a red card. Event B is choosing an even number. Event C is choosing a black card. Find the probability of A intersection B intersection C. Okay, if you think about this in terms of like trying to create this set without thinking about it logically, then it's hard. But if you just think about it, okay, event A is choosing a red card. B is choosing an even number. C is choosing a black card. What's the probability that you choose something that's both a red card, even, and a black card? Zero. Zero. Remember, this means both and. 
the intersection means both and. So this is kind of a trick question. If event A is a red card, event C is a black card, you can't choose both a red card and a black card in one. Okay, does that make sense? All right, so that's the end of that. Now, with... Can you number 24? What was that? Sure. You choose a card from a standard deck of cards at random. What's the probability that you do not choose a club? It's just subtracting a certain amount of suits you have. Yeah, so, or just think about it. There are four suits. One of them is a club, so it's just three-fourths, right? 39 over 52, which would simplify to three-fourths. Yeah. Good. All right. So with that, um, we're finished with that lesson. So let's go to 22.2, permutations and probability. Permutations and probability. Let's do it. All right. Permutations. When are permutations useful in calculating probability? What are permutations? Caitlin, can you read this sentence for me, please? Good job. Thank you. Permutation is the selection of objects from a group in which order is important. Okay? So, let's say I've got a group of letters, A, B, and C. How many different groups can I create from that if the order is important? Well, for instance, I could pick A, B, C, and A, C, B. Those are two different groups because the order matters. All right? Um, so that's um, what a permutation is. Okay? It's a selection of objects from a group in which order is important. Order matters. All right? And then we get on to something called the fundamental counting principle here. Fundamental counting principle is if there are n items and a1 waits to choose the first item, a2 waits to select the second item, after the first item has been chosen, so on, there are a1 times a2 times dot 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 times a n waits to choose n items. Okay, now we're going to explain this. Now we're going to explain this. All right, I need five volunteers. So who would like to come? Actually, four. I need four. Okay, Pedro, come on up. Gabby, you can't just say you can't. Oh, yeah, I saw your name. Bring in Gabby. That would be nice. Gabby, one more. That's four. Oh, you're coming up too? Come on up, Gianna. You know what? Make sure it's close enough. Okay. All right. So, I'm in the process of creating my, actually I need, I need like, I need three other volunteers. Victoria. Victoria, come on. You come on. Come on. Yes, come on. yes thank you. Come on. Come on. Come on, just come on. Come on, Deanna. Come on. And, and Matthew. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. Okay. So, I'm in the process of creating uh, my Super Mario Brothers fan club. Right? And I've got to pick, or no, I'm sorry, my my uh, Super Mario uh, like competition. We're we're going to the Super Mario Brothers Championship. Yeah, and I got to pick my squad for that. And so you guys are my crew right now, but I got to pick the elite. Okay, so I got to pick the elite squadron of Super Mario Brothers players. So the question is, okay. I don't really know who's the best, so I gotta pick at random, right? I gotta pick at random, okay? And so the question is, I can only pick three people out of my seven here, right? I can only pick three people out of my seven. The question is, how many different groups of three can I pick? That's my question. How many different groups of three can I pick? All right? Well, so let's, let's think about this, right? Okay, so let's say I pick Gabby, right? So Gabby, come on up, step up. All right, she's she's now my elite squadron. So, right? Okay. How many how many um how many people did I have to choose from in the beginning? How many people did I have to choose from in the beginning? Seven, right? So now she's in my squadron. So she was my first of my seven. Now, how many people do I have to pick from? 
six, right? Oh, Pedro, I, I saw the hand signal. Yeah, you're in the squadron too. Wow. Nice. Super nice. And then I I can't I can't um so now how many people do I have to pick from? How many people do I have to pick from now? Five. Good, 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 okay. So so all right, well, let's see. I'm, I can't pick, so let's do it at random. I can't think of enough to pick just one just one. Ready? Go ahead. Four. Good job, <laughs> Good job, Matthew. Okay, good, good job. All right, you guys can sit down now. And then the actual secret is, is that you're all on my enemy party in the squadron. So I just want to tell you that. <laughs> Man, you're welcome. I just I I love you guys. So if you guys ever want to come play Super Mario Brothers with me in my office. <laughs> this is Molly. I don't actually play Super Mario Brothers, but that would be pretty cool. Um, so, so, what did we just demonstrate? What did we just demonstrate? What we just demonstrated is called the fundamental counting principle. Okay? So, the fundamental counting principle says this. If I've got seven people, right, and I want to figure out, um, if I've got seven people, and I want to figure out a, a, a group, from them, right? Well, I start with seven choices, right? But once I've picked my first one, now I've got six choices, right? Then once I've picked that one, I've got five choices. And if I kept going, I would have had four, then three, then two, then one. And if I want to figure out exactly how many possible choices I could have just made for seven people, right? I would have to multiply them all together. So 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So that's how you do it? Or you just use the number of possible combinations? Permutations, oh, okay. which are actually different than combinations, which we will get into. So that's a very good question. Oh, we're going to get into that? Yes. Okay. So, so that's fundamental counting principle. But that's not the only way we can think about fundamental counting principle. We could also think about it like this. Um, fundamental counting principle, FCP. If I'm thinking about how many outfits I'm going to wear or how many outfits I can choose from my closet. Let's say I've got four shirts, three pairs of pants, and two, two pairs of shoes. And a partridge and a pair of shoes. Just one pair. Okay, I'm talking outfits. Where and then out, 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 out. So where? Fit. It's not an in fit. All right, now, so the question is how many outfits could I make? Four times three times two. No. Yes. Really yes. Four times three times two is 24 outfits. Why? Let's say I got my shirt here. Okay. Now, I've got, I've got three pairs of pants. For each shirt that I pick, I've got three pairs of pants. Now, but for each pair of pants, too, I've got two pairs of shoes. Now, just pretend those are shoes. Are those clogs? Yes, they are, actually. I don't know about you guys, but I think clogs are coming back. Okay. So, let's look. For each shirt, I have how many outfits? One, two, three, four, five, six. So six outfits, but how many shirts do I have? Four. So six four times four is 24. You see that? Yes. So it's four shirts times three pants times two shoes. Does that make sense? That's the fundamental counting principle. Okay. And the way that we applied fundamental counting principle just now with the groups is something that you see pretty often. So let's take a look at an example of that. What was that? What did you call that? Fundamental counting principle. No, Simple as that. It's neither. It's neither. Well, it it's neither because that wasn't that oh. doesn't that doesn't have an order necessarily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's not thinking about order. Well, it's that combinations, I guess. It's a co that's a combination. Okay. That is a combination. Um, good question. Um, so 
let's take a look at A. What are the numbers? What is the number of permutations of all seven members of the club? Well, let's give some backstory here. Um, there are seven members in a club. Each year, the club elects a president, a vice president, and a treasurer. Okay, so here's my club. I don't. I don't. Who? So Gianna's the president. Who's the vice president? Chris is the vice president. Brendan's the treasurer. Who's the secretary? Who else was up there with me? I was up there. Victoria. Victoria is the secretary. Thank you, Victoria. Gianna's the president, though, so you guys got to listen to her. Whatever she says goes, okay? You're in charge, Gianna. All right. What is the number of permutations of all seven members of the club? Okay, let's think about this. The first choice, how many different ways can I make the first selection? Would it be six or seven? Seven. First choice, I got seven different things to choose from. Once the first person has been chosen, there are six different ways to make the second selection. Once the first two people have been chosen, there are five different ways to make the third selection. Cool. Continuing the pattern, there are seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Does that make sense? Seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Cool. Which is 50-40. Right? Now, I'm going to take a pause right here because I, I, I need more volunteers. I need more volunteers. Okay. And it's the people that haven't come up yet. I know, I know, I know. Okay, so 50, 40. I just need one volunteer for now. Come on up, Isaac. Come on. You know you want to. Mr. Brinks. Okay, so we have one person here. Isaac, will you introduce yourself to the class, please? Nice. All right, good job, Isaac. So one, one person, his name is Isaac, okay? How many ways do we have to arrange Isaac? One. There's an only one order. It's just Isaac is here, he's first, he's last. That's cool. Interesting. It's like you think about, yeah, anyway. Uh, you think about, <laughs> I was going to bring the Bible into it. It's like the Alpha and the Omega, right? Jesus is the first and the last. He is one, you know? So it's kind of an interesting way to think about it. Um, all right, but now we need another volunteer because Isaac's looking lonely. So Angelina, come on up. Come on up, Angelina. See, I'm gl so glad you guys are so excited to volunteer. Okay. Now, how many, okay, the first one, with only one person, there was only one arrangement, right? Now there's two people. Our first arrangement is Isaac and Angelina. But is there another way to arrange them? Yeah. What do we do? Angelina and Isaac, good job. Okay, good. Do it. Yay. Okay, switch. You got to switch places. Okay, good. Now, how? so how many ways in total? Two. Good. All right, I need a third volunteer. Pedro. Olivia. Come on up, Olivia. Okay. All right. Now, now we have, okay, our first arrangement is Angelina, Isaac, and Olivia. Okay, is there another arrangement? Go ahead, make another arrangement. Go, 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 quick, 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 yeah. All right, okay. All right, Angelina, Olivia, Isaac. That's another one. Wait, okay, make another one. Make another one. Okay, Olivia, Angelina, Isaac. All right, any more? Okay, good. Oh, you guys are getting the hang of it. Olivia, Isaac, Angelina. Okay, next. Okay, Isaac. Olivia, Angelina, and then Isaac. Nice, you guys got this. Good. All right, any more? No, we're done. How many was that? Six. Good job. Okay, I need one more volunteer. Pedro. Pedro's already come up. Dave, Dave, come on up, Dave. Let's get it, Dave. Let's go. Oh, bringing in the. All right. Okay. Okay. Now. Let's, let's try this now, okay? All right, so our first one is Gabe, then Isaac, then Angelina, then Olivia. Okay, go, go, go make another one. Okay. Isaac, then Gabe, then Angelina, then Olivia. Okay, all right. Come on. 
Okay. There you go. All right. Isaac, Gabe, Olivia, Angelina. It's okay. Everything's fine. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's fine. It will. It will come back. I think maybe. Did you hit on or off? It's okay. It's all right. You know it happens. Okay. I think it'll come back. Just relax. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Hey guys, I think we're back in business. Three, two, nice. Okay, next one is Angelina, Isaac, Gabe, Olivia. Okay. All right, next one. Come on. Come on. Okay, Angelina, Gabe, Isaac, Olivia. Okay. All right. Okay. You can do it. Why do we do it this way? You can do it. Gabe, Olivia. Angelina, Isaac, okay, all right, okay. Gabe, Gabe, Angelina, oh, wait, oh, I'm, I'm messing it up here, hold on, okay, Angelina, Gabe, Olivia, Isaac, okay, all right, good. Okay, Gabe, Olivia, Angelina. Okay, all right, all right, we're getting confused. All right, good job. You guys sit down. You, you did a good job, man. Good job. All right, you did a good job. Now, now, there were more probably, right? Yes. You guys can probably see there were probably some more to do. Question is, how many? How many? How many? What's the pattern? What's the pattern? How many? So at first it was one. Look, look. Look, one, and then it was two. You can do it. You can do it. Okay. And then it was six. So what would be next? What's the pattern? Not 16. It's a good guess. Not eight. No, no, no. Definitely not eight. Not 12. That's a good guess, too. No. What's the pattern? How do we get from one to two? What's the pattern? 24. Why is it 24? How do I get from yes? How do I get from one to two? Multiply by two. How do I get from two to six? Multiply by. How do I get from six to? I multiply by four. You see? So I'm multiplying. I get 24. If I picked five people and I wanted, you see, you guys would have been up there for a while, right? If I picked five people, how many would that have been? What do I multiply by? Five. What's that? 24 times five? 100 and five times 20 is? 120. Good, 120. Good. Good. 120. Good. If, if I did six people, that would have been a long time if there's five, right? If I did six people, I would multiply by six. What's six times 12? 72. 720. Good. You see? It starts getting up there pretty fast. You see this? Now take a look. If, if I just asked you, listen, if I just asked you the number of permutations of a group of four people, right? Put your phone away, please, Chris. Thank you. If I asked you the number of permutations of four people, you wouldn't have to go through it. You would just say, oh, I know this. It's just four times three times two times one. Does that make sense to you? Right? You just keep multiplying. If it was six people, it would be six times three times two times one. And I got that. That was, I'm sorry, six times, six times five times four times three times two times one. Does that make sense? Pedro, what are you doing, Pedro? My stuff was <laughs> okay. The difficulty, Pedro, is you're missing the gold, man. This is the gold right here. You know when you're in the Olympics? When you're in the Olympics, listen to me. When you're in the Olympics and you're running the race, and then there's that gold medal just waiting for you, and instead you turn around and you're like, someone's fondling my bag. Right? That's what just happened. Okay. Now, shh. So listen, 
7, if it was 7, I would do 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And I could do that in my calculator, right? I can figure that out. 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, right? 50, 40. The one's not really matching right now. You're right. It's not. Good job. Good observation. But listen. Listen. I get 50, 40, right? But everyone pull out your calculators because I will tell you that there is a better way. In fact, shh, there is a better way, and it's this. Seven! Actually, this is a mathematical notation. This is called seven factorial. That exclamation point means factorial. Where do we find the exclamation point? Seven factorial is equal to seven times eight times five times four times three times two times one. Four factorial is equal to four times three. Four factorial is equal to four times three times two times one. What's five factorial equal to? Five times four times three times two. Times one. No, not times one. You have to remember the times one. You have to. But it's not necessary. Okay. Four times three times two. So, how do we do this in our calculator? Everyone pull out your calculator now. It's now. Do it right now. Yes, sir. Now. Okay. Pull out your calculators quickly, quickly, quickly. You can do it. We all can do it together. We are a team. Family of warriors. <laughs> okay. Shh. Now, listen. Pull out your calculator, type in seven. Then you go to PRB. You see this? There's the second P, repetition, over here. Then down, right and then down is PRB. You type that, it says NPR, NCR, and then Exclamation point. Hit enter twice. That's permutation um, combination. I'm sorry. If you have a, a fancy calculator like you guys have, I found the exclamation point. I don't know. There's nothing. If you have a fancy calculator, then it's different. No, it's Anybody else need help with their calculator? I did it. If you Let's use these. So if you notice, the first thing that we did was a factorial. It was 7 factorial. And that's what we got was 50, 40. So let's take a look at step B now. I hope you guys are following along in your book. Step B. Remember that number, 50, 40. The club is holding elections for president, vice president, and a treasurer. How many different ways can these positions be filled? There are how many different ways for the president? Seven. Seven. Once the president has been chosen, there are? Six different ways for the position of vice president. Once the president and vice president have been chosen, there are five different ways the position of treasurer can be filled. So there are seven times six times five, which if you do that in your calculator, is 210. Now remember, we're only interested in the first three positions in this case. That's how we get 210. Remember that number, 210. Wait, how do you use the combination to calculate? Oh, you're gonna, we're going to get there eventually. But first we have to learn what we're doing. 
first we have to learn what we're doing and then we'll learn how to do it in our calculator. What is the number of permutations of the members of the club who were not elected as officers? Okay, so what does this mean? <coughs> After the officers have been elected, there are how many members remaining? Four. Four. So there are four different ways to make the first selection. Once the first person has been chosen, there are three, three different ways to make the second selection. Continuing this pattern, there are what? Four times three times two, two times one. Four times three is 12, times two is 24. So there are 24 permutations of the unelected members. Does that make sense? I did, in my head. Okay, 24. Now, we're going to bring this together. Just focus and pay attention. Divide the number of permutations of all the members by the number of permutations of the unelected members. There are how many permutations of all the members? How many permutations of all the members? Step A. Step A. 50-40. 50-40 of all the members. Okay. There are how many permutations of the unelected members? 24. So the quotient is 50-40 over 24, which ends up as... 210. Yeah, I knew 210 was in there. It was. But wait a second. Do you see that? We got 210 by doing something with the, all the members divided by the unelected members. What did that look like? Well, that looked like this. 7 factorial, which is 5040, over 7 minus 3, because I took 3 elected officers out of the equation, right? So 7 factorial over 7 minus 3 factorial was 7 factorial over 4 factorial, which is 2010, or 210. Does that make sense? But why? Look, if I wrote this all out, 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and this was 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, what happens with the 4, 3, 2, and 1? Cancel. What am I left with? which is exactly the number of permutations of the elected officers. See this? What have we just shown? Yes. What have we just shown? We just showed this equation here. The number of permutations of n objects taken r at a time is given by npr equals n factorial over n minus r factorial. So what would that have been in our case? So it's permutations. N was equal to how many? How many did I have to choose from? How many people? Seven. How many people was I choosing? What were my positions? President, vice president, and treasurer. So I was picking three. So it's seven P three equals seven factorial over 7 minus 3 factorial, you see? Which was 210. That's exactly what we got. You understand? You got that? So, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Go ahead now and do numbers 1 through 3 in your homework. See if you can do that. Or let me give you, let me give you another example first before I do that. Before I do that, how many people are in this class? 1, 2, 3, 20. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, so N is 19. And how many volunteers did I pick on that last round? Four, right? So I picked four. So let's figure out, go ahead on your own, figure out how many different permutations there were which means how many different orders of volunteers I could have picked from just this classroom, just picking four people. Go ahead and figure that out. How many different permutations were there or were possible just picking four people out of a classroom of 19? Go ahead and figure that out now. 93,024.
Okay, let's take a look. 19 P4 is equal to 19 factorial over 19 minus 4 factorial, which equals 19 factorial over 15 factorial. Plug that into my calculator. 19 factorial divided by 15 factorial is 93,024. That's pretty crazy. That's, that's, a little, that's like a lot, right? Just taking four people out of the class of 19, and I could have done that in 93,000 different ways. Three people, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. You sure did. You know, when you think about when you think about God as an infinite God, right? It starts to make sense when you realize that, like, just a simple choice of picking volunteers in one math class of 19 people, I could have picked 93,000. Right? Think of all the little choices that you make in your day. Think about the fact that all of that probably is God's work. Right? How do you explain that? Yes, Tim. Okay, so my example is a couple of years ago that I. Uh, sorry. Like, sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Okay. All right. Go ahead, sir. Okay. So I guess this is just a year ago. I think it was like ten years. But anyway, uh, there was like a whole bunch of different facts, um, like all these like fun facts and stuff. And so I found out that like if you take like nine million bricks, you can make like like a hundred and fifty million dollars. Various physics, various things like that. That was like the big. That's cool. Let's let's check that out. What nine factorial would be? Nine factorial would be three hundred sixty-two thousand eight hundred eighty. Pretty yeah. cool, right? Yeah. So you have nine Lego bricks to make three hundred sixty-two thousand different combinations. That's cool. All right. So we have we have an infinite God. What's the difference? Nine Lego bricks is a lot bigger than one Lego brick. Well, you know, sometimes you just got to be like super pro, and it just works out that way. All right, numbers one through three. Numbers one through three in your homework. I want you guys to do those. Oh, we don't have a lot of time. Um, you guys don't have any homework tonight. But look. Oh, I love you. Oh, thanks. What is going on? Why is this not working? Okay, I'm going to try this one more time. All right, shh, 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 shh. look, last one, last thing that we're going to go over. MP3 player has a playlist with 12 songs. Actually, we can go over MP3. MP3 player has a playlist with 12 songs. You select the shuffle option, which plays each song in a random order without repetition for the playlist. In how many different orders can the songs be played? What is that? Wow. Yes. Is my correct? Twelve factorial. Yeah. Okay. So if you've got a playlist at home, if you got a playlist on your like Spotify or whatever, and you just like on your iTunes, you got a hundred and something different songs on there, and you hit shuffle. Like, that's with 12 songs, you get 479,000, 479 million. If you put 100, forget it. I have one like 150. Yeah, that's like 9 trillion. Look. It says, it says overflow error. Exactly. <laughs> now, hold on. I want to I wanna go over these two, so we're going to go over them. Look. Shh, shh, class. There are 10 different runners in a race. Medals are awarded for first, second, and third place. What's N? What's N? N is 10. What's R? R is 3. So it's 10P3 equals 10 factorial over 10 minus 3 factorial. Okay? That would be 10 factorial over 7. Guys, don't pack up yet. 
I got two minutes. Seven factorial is seven twenty. So seven hundred and twenty. That's pretty cool. Ten different runners in a race out of ten runners, seven hundred and twenty different ways they could finish. First, second, and third. Nine players on a baseball team. How many different ways can the coach choose players for first base, second base, third base, and shortstop? What's N? Nine. Nine. What's R? Four, right? Okay, so it's nine P four. Because there's four positions. First base, second base, third base, shortstop. Okay. I understand, but there's just for this problem. Oh, you're asking how many players can play the infield. Yes. Okay. Over nine minus four factorial equals nine factorial over five factorial, which equals three thousand twenty-four. Pretty cool. Nine players on a baseball team. Three thousand one three thousand ways to pick an infield. I don't know. How many are there? I mean, there should be more than nine. I hope so. All right, guys. Thank you for your attention today. Um, go out and play some baseball. No homework. <laughs>